Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. This um, this time we're talking about a bit of a legend. The Webley Royal Irish Constabulary Revolver. This particular one is a model of 1883. Um, in 1868, after some trials, Webley's double action revolver was adopted by the Royal Irish Constabulary. And in honor of that occasion, they named it the Royal Irish Constabulary. And it went through a couple of iterations, um, some fairly serious changes before they actually changed to a completely different model of RIC, the 1883. These guns were widely used. Um, they're the sort of, the RIC is sort of the father of the Bulldog revolver, which, um, it's really just got a slightly smaller handle is <laughs> the main difference. The RIC was available in a variety of calibers, um, 442 Webley or 44 Webley, 450 Adams, which was the first metallic handgun cartridge adopted by the British military to use in their Adams um, cartridge conversion revolvers. And, um, the 1883 was made in 44, 450 Adams, and a longer framed version with a longer cylinder was even available in 455, which I am told, and which appears to be not at all pleasant to fire. <laughs> anyway, it's a solid, reliable gun. They served for a number of years. Um, the model of 1883, they started proofing them for uh, nitrous or nitro powder, what we would call smokeless powder, in the uh, late 1880s. And they remained in service with police bureaus and even as a second standard pistol with officers of the British Army um, right up until World War I. In fact, the 450 Adams um, will fit in a 455 or 476 Webley revolver, and I'm told that they were being provided to British Home Guard in World War II. Uh, the 450 Adams cartridge, not necessarily Model 1883 revolvers. It's really quite an innovative revolver. Um, it does have a safety cock notch. The hammer, like later Webleys, does not return to a safe position after you release the trigger, and there are reasons for that. And, um, Great double action trigger pull on this one. And um, really surprisingly mild shooting in 450 Adams. 450 Adams makes about the same energy as a 38 special target load. About a, from this gun, about 190 some odd foot pounds. We'll get into that more on the tabletop. Okay, let's talk about the cartridge that first. This is 450 Adams. A short, fat little bullet. They they look like a cartoon bullet, and I, <laughs> it's not a macho to say so, but God, I think they're adorable. And um, since these guns were nitro-proofed um, in the late 1880s, early 1890s, uh, my typical load is a 215-grain cast lead bullet over four grains of unique from this gun that yields a muzzle velocity of 635 feet per second and around 190 foot pounds of energy. So comparable to 38 loads from a snub nose. And um, really, it was a pretty good choice for a police round at the time because it's not so powerful that it's going to shoot through the architecture all over the place and hit innocent bystanders, but it's, um, 15 grain bullet at 635 feet per second. It's got some thump to it. Um, the expression the British used was a little, uh, a little powder, a lot of lead, shoot them once, shoot them dead. And they kept that right, right through world war II. Um, that philosophy, not this cartridge. Uh, although this cartridge, in a variety of names, it started out as 450 Adams, even though it was admittedly a bit anemic for military service. And I am told, don't quote me on this, 
that they were issued to Home Guard when 455 and 38200 and other cartridges weren't as readily available. Um, this is my go-to load, but I do sometimes load 138 grain .451 round ball over a modest charge of black powder. And this gives about 135 foot-pounds of energy, but that's more than enough for target shooting. And frankly, it's easier on the gun. Um, old guns, as long as you stay within the pressure specs, pressure is really not the enemy. Recoil is. Um, because recoil, recoil wears the gun out. This is why they advise you not to fire too many plus P loads out of your 38s unless they're rated for 38 plus P as most modern 38 revolvers are. So the first things first, let's unload and show clear. To do that, this is a gate loading pistol like many of its contemporaries. And you simply put the gun in the safety notch, open the gate, and ensure that there are no cartridges in the chambers. Uh, the gun has two modes of operation, single action, which is eh, a little on the heavy side, but very commendably crisp, very easy to use, and double action, which on this particular gun is extremely smooth. Not light, but very, very smooth. I have no trouble keeping rap getting rapid repeated hits uh, in the black at seven yards, which is a realistic range for this gun. Now, to unload the gun after you've fired it, again, you put the hammer in the safety notch, and you reach under the barrel and twist the acorn, that's what this piece is called, and pull out the ejector rod, which runs up the middle of the cylinder arbor. And then you just push the cartridges out one by one. And then, of course, you fill the holes with cartridges, and you're off, you're off and running again. And this simply goes right back in, and a twist locks it in place so that it doesn't come out under recoil. Disassembly of the gun is very, very simple. You just open it up, the ejector rod again, pull out the cylinder arbor, open the side gate, and the cylinder comes right out. As you can see, this gun is a five-shooter, and the chambers are cut for the short Adams cartridge. Reassembly, very simple, put it back in, oops, run in the cylinder arbor. Let, let's pause this for a second. You can see this flat spring here poking up, and this provides friction against the cylinder, and that is to keep the cylinder from rotating backwards. Now, the shape of the arbor, it has a cutout for the barrel at the top, so you just push it in takes a little bit of fiddling in this example because of that flat spring. Come on, there we go. And once you get it all the way in, it is secured by putting the ejector rod up the middle of it and twisting the acorn. Now, unlike Colts of the period, it was safe to carry this gun with all five chambers loaded because you could put the gun in the safety notch. So there was no need to leave an empty chamber, which I suppose is a good thing because it's a five-shooter. Earlier iterations, some earlier iterations of the Royal Irish Constabulary were six-shooters, but the 1883 is a five-shooter. And the fact that the cylinder can free rotate in one direction, the hand stops it from moving backwards, is not a problem if all five chambers are loaded. And of course, after you fire it, the firing pin will pin the primer of the cartridge you've just fired so that it can't rotate. And so you always know that the next bullet in line is going to be good because the cylinder won't have rotated to somehow to put a bullet, uh, a fired case under it. And uh, the system works really fine. And I've had a number of people examine this, go um, cock the hammer and go, wow, that cylinder's really loose. You know, I'm not sure I would fire this. Well, the thing is, is the cylinder, when you pull the trigger, stops moving. This thing locks up like a bank vault. There is no movement in it. And it stays locked up 
until the hammer strikes and you release the trigger, at which point it gets all loosey-goosey again. Um, the grips, um, unlike the Bulldogs that are the somewhat more compact versions of this gun, um, there is no back strap. The one-piece wooden grip fits in place and is secured by screws at the top and bottom. And this works fine. Um, this gun, well, the Royal Irish Constabulary is sort of the father of the Webley Bulldog and innumerable Belgian and Spanish knockoffs, mostly Belgian. Some of which were quite good quality, some of which really weren't. But this pattern of revolver with this cylinder arbor and this style of ejector rod uh, was widely made by the Belgians in calibers ranging from 22 short to, uh, I believe the biggest I've ever seen is 45 Colt, which must be genuinely unpleasant to fire, <laughs> presupposing it's safe. Um, the sights are surprisingly good for its period. The front sight, which is silver plated, of all things, and um, stands up nice and visible. You've got a V-notch at the rear, set into a trough in the frame, and while it's not a wonderful night sight by modern standards, it's actually good and quite usable. Again, I have no problem getting hits in the black at seven yards, even in rapid fire. Um, I'm not going to show you the mechanism because there's no way to do that because this is a solid frame with no side plate and fishing all the bits out and getting them back in their proper place can be annoying. Um, it's not a large gun at all. I don't know if that's apparent. Um, it's about six and three quarter inches long and about five inches high. Um, and it weighs a mere 18 ounces. So, uh, there were... They were available in a variety of calibers, 44 Webley, or 442 Webley, as it's sometimes called, and a longer frame, longer cylinder version was available in 455, which must have been a right bastard to shoot, because, you know, it's not bad at all in 450 Adams. It's, um, I am told, quite a bit stouter in 44 Webley. And 455 is significantly stouter than even that. So um, recoil, yeah, would have been uh, problematic in the larger calibers. Anyway, it's a pleasant gun to shoot. Good double action trigger pull. Good single action. Accurate, decent sights. And I really just, I really like this old gun. The Webley RIC served throughout the British Empire and Commonwealth. And um, its principal claims to fame in America are twofold. One, that General George Armstrong Custer may or may not have had a pair of Webleys on him at the time of his death at the Battle of Little Bighorn, and they may or may not have been Webley RICs. Um, more literary is its second claim to fame, is that Sherlock Holmes' sidekick, Dr. Watson, carried a Webley RIC don't know the caliber, don't know the details, they really don't matter, they weren't important to the story. But, um, so yes, this is Dr. Watson's gun, and given the timing, he probably had an 1883, but it's not really recorded anywhere. It's really a very nice little gun, it's quite pleasant to shoot, double action trigger's really nice. If it didn't take a geological epoch to reload it, I wouldn't feel bad about carrying it today, but it does. Yes, I'm not very likely to be in a defensive shooting, and if I am, it's unlikely to require five shots, or more than five shots. Yeah, no, I'm just not comfortable with the idea. Anyway, great gun. I love shooting it. I've probably put about 300 rounds through this one of both uh, smokeless and black powder loads, and uh, I just love the hell out of it. Uh, Linda got this for me for my birthday, and... Got it at a very, very good price because Linda, she does that. And um, she got it for me partly because it was one of my grail guns and partly because a character in one of her yet-to-be-finished books 
um, is Gaga for the Victorian era and is a big Sherlock Holmes fan, and she keeps one in her apartment for self-defense. And so it serves multiple functions. Anyway, great gun. They can be had in decent firing condition like this one. <sighs> They're not cheap. Um, they seem these days to start at about $1,000, and more typically you're looking at 1500 to 2500 for a decent one. Uh, so I'm glad Linda got this one, because we couldn't afford that. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> if you like the video, please click like and subscribe below. And if you want to be even more helpful, you could join my Patreon supporters, to whom I'm, I, I am immensely grateful, uh, by clicking the link below in the description. So, hope this finds you well. Stay safe, take care, and we'll talk to you again real soon.